Hello everybody. Our next camera is not a camera. It's this Formula 5 Macro Bellows. Um, some lenses labeled Formula 5 were made by a company called Mitaki Optical Company. This came with a Rexaprins 135mm f3.5 lens. Prins was a Dixon's UK store brand and also a store brand for a company called Bass Camera in Chicago. No idea if they were related or they used the same name and somehow coexisted without suing each other. Anyway, the lens is a preset lens. Uh, you use the front aperture setting to set your smallest f-stop and then there's a detent when you hit it with the same so it's kind of like the lenses on uh, some of the Kiev cameras um, you just swing this over and that way you can stop back down to your selected f-stop without looking there's no focus mechanism and the rear element here protrudes really far for putting it on a camera so it was probably a variant made to work uh, with a macro setup. It looks like it has 12 aperture blades. Uh, Mitaki also made some Prins lenses and this serial number starts with M. So the pairing, if they really did go together, kind of makes sense. This bellows came with a Minolta SR mount or mounts I'd have adapted them directly, but the mounts were pretty beat up and they no longer fit tight. So I decided to adapt them to M42 mount since I have cameras, adapters, extension tubes, a lot of lenses. M42 is pretty flexible too because it has a really long flange focal distance where it bumps up against the front of the camera to the focal plane. It's pretty far. So you have a lot of room to work as far as putting adapters in there to put it on something else. With an M39 to M42 adapter, which is actually in the uh, bellows right now, I can use this uh, Omicron EL lens. I got it from uh, Basket Case Durst and Larger. Its reputation is as a good but not great lens. It's in really good condition and it should have a nice flat field for scanning with a digital camera. It's 75 millimeters, f4.5 at, at widest, stops down to f22, six elements in four groups with an eight blade diaphragm, and it takes 40.5 uh, millimeter filter. Th the first thing was to take it apart and see what I'm working with. I have a few M42 extension tubes for use for parts. I use bits of both of these. The male side of one was just about right to fit over the rotatable Minolta mount, but I had to take off the uh, bayonet leg lugs of the Minolta. It was ugly at first, but with some grinding and sanding, it fit perfectly. Because the rotation is built into the design for twisting the bayonet on, um, I was able to glue the parts together and maintain the rotatability. I was going to skip using the shiny aluminum on the uh, female side. The extension tube part fit pretty well without it. I ended up using it for two reasons. One was a smart reason. There's a lip that centered the extension tube part just right. And one reason was somewhat less smart. I wanted to be able to rotate the fitting so that the lens markings would be at the top once it was assembled using this plate from one of the extension tubes bolted to the extension tube and pressing against the aluminum I could turn it before tightening everything. Test fitting it seemed like a good idea. Of course for it to work the end of the extension tube would need to sit flush with the aluminum I had to expand the metering pinhole to accept a bolt and drill another hole. Then a lot of grinding and sanding, being careful to keep the planes parallel. I drilled a second hole in the plate and it's still looking pretty good. 
The next day, I'm all happy about to assemble when I realize the center hole in the plate is too small and there's no way it's not going to vignette. So there's nothing to do at this point but make the hole bigger. Uh, that's not going to leave much metal and it's soft aluminum. The hole was centered but a bolt hole was off so it looks really crooked. Of course I broke it and cut into one of the bolt holes. I tried it anyway but it just wasn't enough metal to hold securely. Then I had a Homer Simpson moment. I think I even said, go! The extension tubes are made in two parts, male and female, and held together with these tiny set screws. All I had to do was put the lens on the female and then rotate it so the F numbers were up before tightening the set screws. The whole scheme, drilling, grinding, sanding, modifying the plate, completely unnecessary. I glued it up and painted it flat black. After it dried, I added another dope moment. Without the aperture pen, I'd have a light leak, and doubly so on the female side where I drilled the extra hole. I used black silicone to plug up the holes and wipe the excess off before it dried. Uh, it's twice the effort of actually thinking it through before I started, but it came out pretty nice. So these next pictures are my first tests with it to see just how much magnification and how flat. It'll take, you know, a little bit of fine tuning to make sure that this axis is perfectly straight and that all of the planes are perfectly parallel. So it might take a smidge more grinding and maybe some shims to get it just right before I use it for scanning. But overall, even though it took too long, I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. So I'll get this bad boy hooked up to the Sony again, and I'll see you then.